I surely wouldn't be working on it when you're trying to. Here we go. Okay, one moment. Okay. Okay, everybody that's joining us tonight, thank you for your patience. We are, had some technical difficulties getting a late start. Um, apparently, we've now got a two-minute countdown when we hit the go button. But uh, anyway, we're up. We're live. We're streaming. And uh, Faye is uh, actually streaming it from uh, her office. And there it is. And so we'll share it. And uh, get moving here. We're glad you joined us tonight and uh, we hope that uh, you are watching and that uh, you will get blessed by what you're going to hear tonight as we talk about understanding the things of the spirit. And uh, just before we get started, I want to share this um, to my timeline, the things of the spirit. Okay. And, um, and then we're going to uh, introduce our guest tonight. This is going to be a good show tonight. We've got a lot of good things to talk about. And so uh, as some are just now starting to uh, uh, get logged in and uh, those that are on the Facebook uh, live stream, we're glad you've joined us. Uh, we are we are going to be talking tonight about how to understand the things of the spirit. And my guest tonight, and, and by the way, just want to say this is Dr. Bill with World Bible School and welcome to Kingdom Dynamics. And my guest tonight is not a stranger to Kingdom Dynamics, nor to the 1412 Saturday Spotlight. Uh, he has uh, recently received his doctorate in theology, so we, we now call him Dr. J. But uh, Apostle Dr. Jimmy Lewis, who is a senior leader of Living Waters Fellowship in St. James, Missouri. Uh, he is passionate about the continent of Africa, especially Tanzania and Kenya, where he has preached many times. He's also the author of a book called The Realm of Constancy. You can find it on Amazon.com, currently in paperback only. You will be blessed by the book. Soon it's going to be a revised edition available in both paperback and uh, Kindle formats. Um, and so someone says, I need to smile. That's probably Faith that says, I need to smile. Uh, <laughs> Dr. Jimmy is uh, has his doctorate, doctoral degree in theology, and he is the vice chancellor of World Bible School International Training Center and currently the senior apostle of a local assembly. And uh, Pastor, we're glad you're with us tonight. It's going to take me a little bit of adjustment to uh, honor you by saying uh, Dr. Jimmy or Dr. J, as Miss Faye calls you. But we're glad you're on the program tonight. Just greet our guests and uh, just say something, whatever's on your heart to say, and then we'll get this uh, lesson started tonight. Well, greetings to everyone. It's a joy to be on the program tonight and discuss a great topic, how to understand the things of the Spirit. And so we're excited about it. We trust you're blessed by what we share with you, encourage you to get in the Word more, like all of us should do. And we have been doing for some time, and it's exciting. It's exciting. Mm -hmm. The Word of God is very exciting. It's not a, a taskmaster, amen, but it's a joy. And I think David said in Psalms 119, 162, he said, I rejoice at your word as one that has found great spoil. So it's it's a pleasure to get into the Word of God and share it with you tonight. Trust your bliss. Amen. Amen. So we're talking about how to understand the things of the Spirit. And, and so you might be, this might work for you. If you are hearing the voice of the Holy Spirit, but it doesn't seem like you're able to understand or properly interpret what he's saying to you, then tonight we hope to help you with that particular situation. Many times we find ourselves unable to understand the voice we're hearing when attempting to even interpret the scriptures. So we want to provide some biblical answers for you and help you in our discussion tonight. To begin with, we are going to start with 1 Corinthians chapter 2, and we're going to start in verses 7 through 14, and there, there are some powerful verses of Scripture. Oftentimes, Pastor Jimmy and I, we have been in meetings where this passage has been read, but it seems like they stop just short of giving the answer. And so 
uh, we want to read to you. So let me just get this started by, by reading this in verse 7. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the ages for our glory. You dropped out. There we go. There we go. Okay, we're back. All right. Uh, so let's go. So we hope we didn't lose anybody. Let's go back to uh, verse uh, nine. But as it is written, I has not seen, nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. Now, uh, here's where a lot of people stop with this. But you notice in verse 10, if you've got a Bible tonight or if you're just writing these scriptures down, he begins in verse 10 by saying, but God has revealed them to us through or by his spirit. We're talking about the Holy Spirit. For Holy Spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. For what man knows the things of a man except the spirit of the man which is in him? Even so, no one knows the things of the spirit, uh, who it, the things of, of, of God, except the spirit of God. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God. That, and here's the purpose, that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God. These things we also speak, not in words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Spirit teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But here's where we're coming to, verse number 14. But the natural man does not receive them or receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him nor can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. So only the Bible uh, reveals what no eye has seen, nor no ear has heard, no heart of man has conceived the things that God prepared for those that love him. Only the word of God revealed by the Holy Spirit. And yes, they're revealed by the Holy Spirit. But it is when we read the word of God, when we open up our Bibles or however you do it on your electronic device, your computer or you, your physical Bible. As you read it, the Holy Spirit begins to speak from the scriptures revelation out of the heart of God. So, Dr. Jimmy, take this tonight. And, and what do you think about this passage and, and about this subject tonight? Go ahead and share that's a tremendous uh, scripture, Bill. Like you said, I've heard it all my life. People kind of quit uh, uh, short of that scripture. I, they always reminded me, I has not seen, ear has not heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man the things that God hath prepared right. for them that love him. And they stop there, you know. They'll uh, say, we can never know him. You know, we got to wait till, uh, you know, something drastically ha happens in our life or a further, further day down the road, we're going to maybe understand it better by and by. Uh, yeah. But then he goes on to say, but, 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 you know, that kind of cancels out the other part of that. It says, but the spirit searches all things, yea, the deep things of God. You right. know, I, I think uh, there's a deep calling out for deep today. There's something in the spirit that we haven't really tapped into and we've, we've tapped into a, uh, enormous amount of understanding of the Spirit of God in this day, but That's there's right. still there's still that cry in our hearts, like it was in, in David in Psalms 42. He said, "Deep calleth unto deep," and I think that the deep in us calling for the deep of God. Amen. We're yes. calling for Lord. What is it that we're lacking uh, to to de to develop us further in understanding Your purpose and our purpose here on the earth? That's why I think very much so that the word of God is so important. Yeah. It, it gives us that uh, uh, ability to, to go on and dig in these things. 
I, I like a scripture in, in, in uh, very familiar with Jeremiah 33, I believe it's verse 3. He said, uh, call upon me. He's in prison. You know, God can speak to you. And we, we need to get that maybe straight. God can speak to you anywhere. That's right. God can speak to us anywhere, okay? You don't have to be in a, 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 a some kind of a, a, a closet, and that's good. We, you know, to be in your closet, seek the Lord. Yeah, we've all done that. That's wonderful. Right. But God can speak to you driving down the road or whatever. And he said, but, you know, he said, call up on me, uh, you know, accost me, answer me, or not answer me, but, you know, call uh, Talk to me, uh, call upon me, and I will show you great and mighty things you don't know. And mm -hmm. to know them things can only be known and or cannot be known any other way than, ha than having spiritual access to it. These things he wants to talk about, we must follow them and know them in the spirit realm. Amen. We can't find them in the earth realm. We can't find them just in our solical man. We have to be connected to that higher element of life, which is the Spirit of God. Amen. Right. And Amen. To me, there's no other way to understand the Bible. Now, when I say that, there's other ways, okay? You can just take the Bible literally. And they are people they call literists. They will not take anything in the Bible other than literally, you know. Mm -hmm. But there, there is a spiritual aspect. I think the Bible is a spiritual book. And I think we have to have, and we need desperately, uh, the Spirit of God leading, guiding us. And, and in Amen. Us in this day. Amen. Apart from that, we're going to still be wandering around and wondering about things that God has spoken to us about. God's not silent today. God's not silent today. God is speaking to somebody that has an ear to hear. In Revelation, a few times, it says, he that hath an ear let him hear what the spirit is saying he didn't say mm -hmm. let your ear just be attached to anything but let our ear be uh, uh, attuned to the voice of the spirit amen right. Hallelujah. and our ear married to his voice we need to not just be hearing about everything that's going around we need to have our ear in tune and married to the voice of god amen that's right that's right amen, amen. and so Keep in mind that the natural man does not receive the things of the spirit because when he hears them, they're foolish to him. So it is said that the words natural man is used one other time in the New Testament. Uh, and uh, and the reference is in Jude verse nine. And it says these are sensual persons. And of course, it depends on the translation you use, uh, carnal persons or natural person, the natural man who cause divisions, not having the spirit or the Holy Spirit. So what Paul meant by the natural man uh, and what he meant by the things of the spirit of God were two different things. Here, yeah. here Jude says in the English Standard Version, it is these who cause divisions, worldly people or natural people, devoid of the spirit. They, they're they simply ordinary people whose hearts and minds are not touched by the renewing work of the Holy Spirit. Mm. So the opposite of a natural man who cannot understand the things of the spirit is the spiritual man. And he knows them. One of the ways is because, first of all, he has a relationship with he who is the epitome of, of the, the spiritual man, which is the Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And when we get the Lord Jesus Christ, we get the package deal. We get Father God, we get Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit is always revealing things. He is always speaking. The issue is uh, really whether we are hearing or we are listening or not. But thank mm -hmm. God for the Holy Spirit. I don't know. Uh, I, I heard you tell your story uh, several times. Uh, I don't remember the ages and things. I was 17 years old when I received the baptism of the Holy Spirit and I began to speak in tongues. And it, it was a struggle for me, especially as a teenager, the confusing years. But, uh, you know, my life has never been the same since. No, it never will be the same, Bill. If the Spirit of God, you know, we have a lot of, a lot of problems. Uh, today with youth and everything, but they can have an experience 
with the Lord like any of us have had. That's in right. Danger, even. But, you know, they need to be touched. Touched. And I, when I say touched, I don't just mean lightly, you know, patted on. When, when I, I think they have to be touched, and we all have to be touched like Paul was on the road to Damascus. Uh, when that, yeah, on the road to Damascus, yeah. He was, actually, he was seized, he was rested, he was taken over that day on that road, and he was forever changed. And I thought That's I'd right. be discussed. But, you know, now, which was natural and fleshly and all that, James said this in James 3 and verse 17. He said, but the wisdom that is from above is first pure. Mm -hmm. It's pure, then peaceable, gentle, easy to be entreated, full of mercy, good fruits, without partial, partial, partiality and without hip, being a hypocrite, <laughs> you know. You know, and I think another translation says, you know, that which is really in the earth, it's, it's, it's sensual. It's earthly. It, it's, mm -hmm. you know, it, it don't mean you can't have fun, enjoy yourself, you know, but you have to be attuned, not just have your ear, you know, tuned to the things of the earth. It has to be to the spirit, the spiritual man. God is talking to us within us. You know, we're not, he's not just really talking to us on the outside like we thought all the time. But God lives in us in our spirit you know our spirit man yeah because we are a new creation we ought to understand things in the new creation and not be so entangled uh, again with the yoke of bondage where we were held but this yes. is a great day and you know i thought about the bereans you know in in the book of acts how how wonderful that is they were more noble it says they were more noable than those in Thessalonica. In right and right. uh in the in in, in the, for this reason, they were more notable, more notable, no, 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 not notable, but more noble. Thank you. No. <laughs> get it out there. More noble. Um, in that they received the word, they received the word, yes. you know, uh, with readiness of mind. They received it with readiness of mind, you know, uh, and, and, and that can be talked about. Amen. In the scriptures, a whole lot of places, but they received they received the word with all readiness of mind and searched. They searched. They investigated. They scrutinized the scriptures. Amen. Daily, I mean, right. like from morning to to night, daily, whether those things were so. That's why I tell a lot of people, you know, and we should tell people, listen. You know, I appreciate you honoring me what I have to say, but don't just take my word for it. Get in the word of God. Be a good Berean and search those scriptures daily and Amen. see if what I'm telling you is true. And if, if you're listening to the spirit, you won't be led astray. You know, Amen. it's easy to be led astray because Proverbs, uh, I believe it's 14, 15. It says the simple, the simple. Now, I'm not calling anybody a simple. Nobody was more simple than me if you want to make a simple, simple. I wasn't a simple ton. I was simple, <laughs> you know, but the simple, it says, believe anything. They believe anything, you know. Right. If we don't stand for something, we can fall for anything. So That's we, right. need, we need the word of God quickened in our hearts. Remember, David said, up uh, one uh, Psalms 119 again. He said, uh, I hide the word in, of God in my heart. That I might not sin against it. Amen. That's right. That's right. Lord. So we got to get the the word, the richness of His word, on the inside of us. Amen. And quit looking around in in the earth realm, trying to find Him. You know, He told the disciples, you know, why, why do they seek? Why do you seek the living among the dead? You know. Amen. Yes. We're, we're not we're not seeking in that realm of death, that dust realm. We're seeking Him by the Spirit. Because everything else, like you said, it, it's foolish to the carnal man. Mm -hmm. We know people, we talk to people, and you tell them something a little bit spiritual. And how are we, how we comparing those things? You've already read it. Spiritual, not spiritual with natural, or natural with spiritual, but spiritual with spiritual. Amen? That's right. And that's, that's right. the only way we can understand it.
especially when you go to the book of Revelation, like you've been teaching on Wednesday nights here. Amen. You, you need the Holy Ghost. We need the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit. Some people don't like to call it the Holy Ghost, but I tell you, I was filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. So I, yeah. don't, I don't mind to use that word, but I'll, I'll call it Holy Spirit because it is the Holy Spirit. Amen. And we need that. But listen, you know, we need, we, we cannot just sit around and, and kind of hum, hum to ourselves and say, Lord, I'm just waiting on you. I'm just seeking you. That's fine. That's fine to do that. It's not wrong. But listen, yeah. when Paul got around him, he wasn't doing that. But what he did, what he did, maybe before he did do that and get in that quiet place with God, he began to open the scriptures to people. Amen. Yeah. He, he began to take them apart and, and, and show them about the goodness of God. Amen. And that's what yeah. we have to do. And I, I enjoy that so much. Just get in there. It's kind of like being an ar archaeologist. You know, you're out there digging, but you're not digging in the ground. You're digging in the spirit. You that's right around, you know amen man when you hit something it just takes off and it goes uh, without a broken thread it'll, it'll go all through the scriptures from genesis to revelation and that's what amen. we need in our lives but we need that hunger we need that desire I, you know I, I don't i wouldn't want to i wouldn't want the lord just to leave me and say well this I'm, I'm not going to tell you anymore like he did daniel seal up the book <laughs> now no now, Dr. Jimmy, we've got uh, we've got several watching on the Facebook live stream tonight, but particularly yeah. we've got a brother, uh, Raymond Butler, and he he's he urges us not to forget uh, it, uh, them in South Africa. And he makes a statement uh, that there are those who say these gifts or the Holy Spirit was for the early church. And he yeah. also clarifies, but the Bible doesn't support that thinking. And I'm glad that he brought that up because yeah, the truth is, we talk about the Holy Spirit or we talk about the revelation that comes by the Holy Spirit. There are people who believe that they, they profoundly believe that all of that was for those in Bible days, that it was only for those till the end of the Bible was written. And then all of that changed. But the reality is uh, we know that. Uh, the Holy Spirit is for us today because the Bible said in Acts chapter 2 that this gift is for us, for our children, and for our children's yeah, yeah, children, yeah. and for all those who are afar off, meaning all generations forward. So everything pertaining to the Holy Spirit is for us today. The gifts of the Spirit, the revelation the Holy Spirit brings. And as you yeah. as you mentioned before the broadcast started, Jesus said these words. He said that my sheep know my voice and the voice of a stranger. They will not follow. Now, he was speaking to his his followers. He was speaking to yeah. the Jewish community and letting them know that there is a thief out there. There are those who are preaching false doctrine and saying that, hey, this thing's not for us today. But remember what Paul said in Romans 8. He said to be carnally minded is death. So if we keep thinking with the mindset of even a religious system, we will end up missing out on the things of the Spirit of God. So we have to upgrade our mindset. We have to upgrade the way we see things. And you're right. I could have never taught the book of Revelation on a, even with a, a Bible education, even no. with just reading and and searching. It takes a, the Holy Spirit to bring revelation even when we study the scriptures. Absolutely. It takes the Holy, Holy Spirit to reveal anything to us. You know, um, you, you mentioned something there. To be carnally minded. The scripture says to be carnally minded is death. Yes. But it turns around and says, you know, but to be minded of the things of the spirit, they are life. And, you know, you, you take that in the sense of being habitual with it, you know, doing it all the time. To be in being carnal minded, just seeking the things of carnality all the time. And there's a lot of good things, folks. And I'm not saying we should we should enjoy every one of them. I really do. Uh -huh. Amen. But we don't want to be weighted down with it. But to be habitually walking in the spirit and listening to the spirit, we can do that too. And that it's death. Amen. But in the in the in the realm of the spirit, it's life. And Jesus come that we might have life. 
Yes, we might did. have it more abundantly. Amen. I, I, I believe in life. I believe in life now. Uh, I believe in life after a while. I believe in life forever, you know. Amen. So we have life. The thing is, you know, the people watching out there, just know that you have life now. That Jesus Christ is your life. He is your life. And that's zo. That's no life in the Greek. And that means God life. It's not your natural life. Yes. Or yes. your stomachal life. You know, which means thought, thoughts, will, desire, and emotions. And a lot of people are led in the natural way or the solical life. But there's a higher life living inside of us now that we have to pay more attention to that eventually, to me, it will cause that which is solically to start listening to the spirit more and more and more. Amen? Yes. I mean, that's another subject. I don't want to get away from our subject tonight about the word because we need the word. And we have a lot of scripture to share about that. And if we were in a Bible school, in a Bible school setting, you know, when we had more articulate them a little better, you know, and give a little more clarity to things that we need. People are asking a lot of questions, Bill, a lot of questions yeah. today about things, about things that we are hearing and things where I don't think there are much doubt in people's life after we've lived for God for 30, 40 years or long, even longer that uh, we, there's not been a change in a lot. But the problem they are hearing about is what we're hearing. The problem is what are they hearing? Because remember, yeah. as is said, who shall believe our report? Who shall believe our report? Or That's literally, right. it means who shall believe the, our hearing? It's what we're hearing yes. because it's so it's so it's so detached from the natural realm, and we start speaking from the spiritual realm. That's where Jesus always worked from. Amen. Jesus right. always the us, but always talked about the things that were higher than the natural things. Okay. Mm -hmm. Amen. So, so that's good. And I, I don't know what, what you want to share, but I, I have a lot of scripture to just share along, along those lines. And I kind of like to, and like, and that's, you know, uh, not just uh, knowing about the word, but really believing and understanding and being so in fellowship with the word. Amen. Hallelujah. That's what we're yeah. after, to be to be in intimacy with, with the Lord. Amen. Not just That's fumbling right. around and fooling around and, and having we should have a good time all the time. And we're having a better time now, I am in my life, than I ever had before. Because I know now we're in a brand new covenant, brand new relationship. That's and the right. old don't don't have any dominion over me anymore. So that's wonderful. Amen. We cannot preach law and condemnation and death and rules and regulations. We got to preach about Jesus who took care of all that stuff. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Now, now, now Dr. Jimmy, uh, let me just say this, that you, you remember the scripture that is quoted so often by tons of people that says, but if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life or quicken your mortal bodies. Uh, yeah. And we've heard that so much. And it's a great scripture in a lot of different translations. Ooh. But here's the reality of that scripture. In context, yeah. that scripture is talking about what we said earlier in verse 6, to be carnally minded is death. And he's actually talking about the fact that the Holy Spirit is in you and he mm -hmm. can quicken you even in your understanding so that you can understand the things of the Spirit. That's right. That's what that, it's going to happen like that. And, you know, yeah. we, we can't we can't take Romans 8 there and put it way off in the future someplace because no. it, it didn't say that. It said if the same spirit, not another spirit, but the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in you. That yeah. Spot in you. That's what that means. Dwell in you. It will do more. It will quicken or verbify or make alive your mortal body. Yes. Quicken. This mortal body, I think, is being quickened the more that we understand about the spirit that raised him from the dead living in us. I mean, 
Jesus got up from the dead. He's the only one that ever got up from the dead was Jesus. That's what makes him so much more important in, uh, in our lives because he is a God that's not dead. He's a living. And yes. Amen. And tomorrow morning and all through the night, he's here. And he quickens. You know, David mentioned that quickening, I think, about nine times in 100, 119 Psalms. He used that word. Quicken me according to your word. Quicken me for this, quicken me for that, you know. But it's the word that quickens. Is this not what Jesus said in John 6, 63? Jesus said this. He said the words, not the yes. words. He was yeah. the word. But the words that I speak, they yes. are spirit and they are life. Amen. And that's what we're speaking. We're speaking from that place. Amen. Because we can just speak a lot of words in the natural and there's not too much going on. But listen, if we speak it from the spirit, it will not return void. But it will accomplish, it will be accomplished where unto he sends it. Amen. That's right. That is a creating living word, right? The word yes. of God, remember Hebrews 4, he said, said over there that the word of God is quick, powerful, sharper than right. any more to any short. But the word quick does not mean fast. It means living. In the Greek, it yes. means the word is living. And the word yes. is living inside of us. Amen. And that word we're speaking is life because we're not just speaking it out of a natural realm. We're speaking it out of the spirit of God. Amen. And those Amen. words are creating. Amen. And, and, and we love that. We love that thing in Proverbs all the time. I've quoted it many, many, many times. And I quoted it all wrong because I thought it said, um, uh, the the uh, how does it say that in Proverbs? Um, we, it's, we we have the, the power of life is not in our tongue. It don't say it like that, but it says what? How many times? Death, you that? death and life. Death and life. Death and life. I always thought it meant life and life and death. Life and death. That's the way I always co uh, quoted that. One day I looked and it said that says death and life. I think people are more prone to think about death than they are life. Mm -hmm. But death, death and life is in the power of the tongue. But we can speak death. But why speak death? Because the word's not dead. His life is not dead. His That's words right. are quickening. His words are powerful. They're more powerful than any and sharper than any two-edged sword. But we have right. life and our death and life in our tongue. And they that love it shall eat the fruit of it. Well, I don't like I don't like to speak about death too much. Amen. I like to speak about life. Amen. I like to yeah. speak about living. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, now, now Dr. Jimmy, um, a, a brother said that the spirit that stood with God in the first chapter of Genesis is the spirit that dwells among us today. And that's very true. And it yeah. made me it made me uh, think of of something. And I looked at Romans chapter one, verse 20 and 21. Mm -hmm. And here's here's what it says. For since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and yeah. Godhead, Elohim, that's right. that's right. so that they are without excuse. Being able to comprehend is not a problem for people. Uh, people, yeah. the Bible said people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. Right. What he goes on in verse 21 to say, because although they knew God, they did not glorify him as God, nor yeah. were thankful, but became uh, futile in their thoughts and the foolish hearts were darkened wow what yeah. a portion of scripture now, isn't that wonderful the invisible things of god are clearly seen you know, yeah clearly seen by the things that are made even his eternal godhead and all that amen and then yeah. why is it so difficult for us to to look out over this beautiful country amen and look at just a tree just a tree and you know, I, I couldn't make that tree, but the end stood by the things that are made. So when I look out there and I see a tree, amen, immediately I go to the word of God. Now that's mm -hmm. a natural tree out there, okay? 
But trees in the scripture, when we can take them out of their types and shadows and bring them into the reality of the new covenant, that tree is you. That tree is you. Amen? Amen. That tree yeah. is you. Now in, the, now, in the Old Testament, they took a tree and put it into water. To me, that tree was a, a picture of the cross. To me, it was a picture of the cross. And they took that tree and put it into the, the bitter water. Amen. What a transformation from the old covenant to the new covenant. Amen. Yes. From the types and the shadows. But see, the old covenant to me is still important because we're still digging out of it. We're not under it, but we're still digging out of some beautiful things. Here's what Jesus said about that. I, I love this. This would go on all night. Amen. I love it. But in John chapter 5, verse 39, Jesus said to them, search the scriptures. Search yes. the scriptures. Dig into all the scriptures that you want to dig into. Search them for in them, in the scriptures, you think you have eternal life. But the scripture talks about me. He's the one that's got eternal life. <laughs> So the scriptures to me brings clarity to, to eternal life. Search the scriptures and then you think you have life. It's not just the word that we have life. No, Jesus is the word. Amen. But we can search the scriptures because he told them also, you know, that mo if you don't believe what it's Jesus talking because Moses talked about me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Now, you know, when Isaiah 55 talks about the trees of the hill, us trees of the field will clap their hands. Oh, yeah, you know, they here, we, here we have a tree and people immediately think of a tree planted in the ground and blowing in the wind. And they're saying that's the tree clapping oh. their hands without understanding. Oh. See, that's what the carnal mind does. When the Bible said in oh, our yeah. text verse, but the natural man does not perceive or see uh, or receive oh, no. the things the spirit because they're foolish okay. so they see a tree out there blowing in the wind but when the bible yeah. talks about that the trees of the field will clap their hands that's yeah. us we're the that's trees us. of we're the, in his field in his pasture and we're we're to worship the lord we're to clap before the lord we're to wave yeah. before the lord and yeah. that takes even the littlest bit of spiritual discernment just to see that picture amen just a little bit that's a beautiful picture right there it is I, I like it because, you know, it starts out, he said, uh, I think verse 10, he says, as the rain comes down from heaven. That's it. As the rain comes down. Now, that's a picture of, to me, of the, the presence of God coming into our life. He said, as the rain comes down from heaven and waters the earth and cause the things in the earth to spring forth in bud. Listen, the next verse, yes. he said, so shall my word be that goes out of that's your it. mouth. You know, that's it. Amen. Because it, it, he comes down in, in the present. He comes down. Once he gets down, he stays down. Amen. But as the rain, using just a, 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 a metaphor there, uh, just as the rain comes down and softens them old clouds and stuff in the earth, so shall my word be that goes out of your mouth. Amen. Yeah. Amen. That, 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 it's, the word is creative. Amen. The word is creative. And, and I don't know if, if, if we realize it, but we're creators. Uh-huh. We're creators as well. Amen. We're yes. gonna create we're gonna create heaven or we're gonna create something that's not like heaven. Amen. But we are creators. We're restorers of past to dwell in. Amen. We're to raise up many uh, other generations and everything else. We are creators. We're saviors in the savior. Obadiah, one chapter, but the last verse in that one chapter, it says saviors. Mm -hmm. Judge the Mount of Esau. Amen. Saviors in the Savior. I am not the Savior. You are not the Savior, but we're saviors in the sense of deliverers. Yes. Delivering creation. Yes. And we, we have to do that not just uh, in our, our natural. It has to be, of course, him living in and through us. And where are those saviors, those deliverers going to show up at? The scripture says they shall come to Mount Zion. They'll come to God's people. They'll come to the church to deliver them, to set them free. Whew. That's right. He has come to Mount Zion. See, yeah. we're, 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 going, we're going to drift away from ourselves. 
Yeah. But you know, the yeah. Hebrew writer says, listen to the Hebrew writer in, in Hebrews 12, around verse 22. He said, he tells us where we have not come to. He said, you are not come to Mount Sinai. If you touch that mount of darkness, you'll be thrust through with the dark and everything else. We haven't come there. That was a fearful thing found in, in Exodus 19. And the people didn't want to go up there. They sent Moses. Man, they were Yeah. Because God came down on Sinai. But listen, same thing happened to Mount Zion. You haven't come there, but he said, you are come to Mount Zion. And we're not marching to Zion no more. We have come to Mount Zion and to a new, numerable company of angels, for the church of the firstborn, to the heavenly Jerusalem, the spirits of just men made perfect. That's where we come to. That's where we're living out of. Amen. Amen. All right. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Let, 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 let me just go a, a little bit here uh, longer. You can stop me anytime you want to. Go right uh, ahead. But, you know, in Luke chapter 24 is a, a, a wonderful scripture. I've read that and I've read that and I've wondered about it. And finally, the Lord let me see what, what was wrong. But they had just come from uh, the crucifixion. They were coming back down the road, the road of uh, Emmaus, a uh, seven-mile journey. Amen. And they come down and they had these uh, sad conversations. Their eyes, this is spiritually speaking, now their eyes were beholding to the earth realm. They were looking to the earth. They did. They were there. They saw what happened. And Jesus come amongst them. They did not know who he was. Amen. He said, what's this sad count? It's this conversation you got going on. And their hearts burned within them. Finally, he had to tell them some things and their eyes were open and he vanished out of their sight. But he started with verse 25 of, 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 of Luke 24. And I yeah. thought, Lord, now wait a minute. Here these people were seeing you crucified. And they come back and didn't know who you were. And the Bible tells me, my sheep know your voice. That's it. And I'm saying, what is the problem? They did not. He was not trying to hide himself or disguise himself. But only they only knew him in two dimensions. They knew him in death and burial. They mm -hmm. did not know him. In resurrection mm, and that is sad did not know him in resurrection he said he said verse 25 old fools which means you know um, um, unwise I, I'll, I'll make a simple word there it means unwise but it means other things <laughs> but he said old fools and he did something he told us never do he said don't call people fools but Jesus called them old fools unwise um, uh, Slow of heart to receive, meant sluggish. They were dull in their perception of things. He said, ought not Christ to have suffered and entered into his glory? And listen to this. And beginning at Moses, he began to expound the things concerning himself. I'm not quoting that just verbatim. But he said, beginning at Moses. Now listen, you got to figure out where's the beginning of Moses. He wrote the first five books of canon of the scripture. Amen. So beginning at Moses, he had to take him all the way back to the beginning. <laughs> yes. It started to unveil some things. You know, and, 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 and ought not Christ to have suffered? Oh, yes, he, he did. It, 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 it was destined for him to do that. Amen. For us, as us, not just for us, but as us. Okay. Amen. And another thing that always got me when I read that scripture, ought not Christ to have suffered? That's one thing. But do we continue to suffer? That's another thing. Right. You know, that's where people, well, I'm just, I'm just suffering for Jesus. Well, now, wait a minute. Ought not Christ to have suffered and entered into his glory? I'm yes. wondering if maybe that's what we should be entering into instead of the suffering entering into his glory. Because the scriptures is full of that. He's bringing many sons unto glory. Amen. Amen. He suffered, Dr. Bill, for us. And thank God for, for that. Praise That's the wonderful. Lord. He, thank he, you, Jesus. He, he paid a debt he did not owe. And I owed a debt I could not pay. That's and it. Jesus suffered that for me. And I don't think I have to drink the bitter cup. I think he drank that for me. And you. And everybody else that's listening. He Hallelujah. did that for you. Our, our portion is not suffering. Our portion right. is reigning in his glory. 
that he brought to us now. Amen. So Amen. I, I love that scripture. And I thought for years, why it was a, they was there at the cross, seen all that and did not know when he had come up beside him, but he appeared to see in a different form. They seen, yes. him in, they seen him in burial, but they did not know him in resurrection. And the, yes. third, the third dimension to know him in is in the power of his resurrection. Right? Amen. Hallelujah. So that's good. Amen. Go ahead. <laughs> well, uh, I'm, I'm just enjoying listening to you teach tonight. Uh, you know, one of the things pertaining to our subject tonight, uh, the carnal mm. man doesn't know the things of the spirit or doesn't right. receive or doesn't perceive. Um, uh, the Bible says that Jesus told his disciples that in John 16, he said, when he, the spirit of truth has come, yeah. he will guide you into all truth. So we already see the need to, you know, we see two separate things. Here's Jesus. And then we see, he says, there's a spirit of truth that's going to come. The Holy Spirit. He's right. the spirit of truth. And he will guide you. That's his function. That's his job. So we have Jesus who went to the cross, who died, but he was resurrected on the third day and was was with them for about 50 days from Passover to Pentecost. And then he steps out of their eyesight. And a, a, a few days later, Holy Spirit comes in with the whole family and the Holy Spirit. So we see two yeah. separate experiences or we see it's the same Holy Spirit, but we see a continuing experience, which just tells right. me this. That's a picture yeah. that there's always more. God oh. always has more. He always has something deeper, something greater for us. And so we need to engage the Holy Spirit. He is the third person of the Godhead. He'll always be spoken of in theology as the right. third position or the third person. And he right. doesn't have a problem with that. But he guides yeah. us into all truth. That is so beautiful because that's why revelation is for the taking. Because Holy Spirit yeah. in you, that's his job. That's his function to lead you into all truth. That's true. You know, like I go back to Jeremiah there, I'll show you great mighty things you know not know. And they actually, Bill, they're, they're inaccessible apart from the Spirit. Mm -hmm. you, you, you'll never see them apart from the Spirit. Because, you know, unless unless you're born of the Spirit and born from above, uh, you cannot see the kingdom, let alone enter the kingdom. Amen. So there has to be a transformation in our lives by the spirit and i know we could get into thousands of scriptures about that and we know that we're being changed from glory to glory out of one glory that's already been canceled into another glory that will right. never fade away amen right and so that's what that and we're doing that by the spirit now the lord is that spirit see that's working right. that in us amen and, and and the more he does that the more i appreciate it and i'm thankful that he's not just going to leave us, you know, here completely undone or half-baked. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's going to do a, a full work of manifestation in our life and to present somebody that's walking in all the spoils of Calvary, of his redemptive work of Calvary. Amen. They're going to display that. God's going to display that, I should say. God is going to display that to all of creation. Even in right. the age, even in the ages to come, he's going to put on display his his marvelous grace and his working in a people's lives. Amen. Amen. How beautiful. We should be so thrilled about that, man. Oh man, it's beautiful. He's he's updated the, our information of what we used to have. What I used to have wasn't very very good. Amen. But I like this Psalms one nineteen verse one thirty. You've read it probably many times, but he says the entrance. The entrance oh, yes. and the opening up of your word, it gives light. It gives understanding to the simple. That word simple, again, is it's about the same one I mentioned in, he, uh, in, in Proverbs. But it, it just means silly one or immature one, okay? He's not calling us a simpleton. He said, you know, we still lack maybe some understanding of where we're at and, and, and who we are in and who is in us. I think that's mm -hmm. a... I think that's a, a big thing with Americans. They kind of have an identity uh, crisis in their life. You know, when we find, when, when the Shulamite said, this is a, is, 
oh, that, that just that grabs me, grabs me. Oh, mm -hmm. that understanding that, you know, I, I belong to him. He is mine and he belongs to me. Amen. We're going to become powerful. Amen. We, it, our, our love and our love for him becomes automatic. We don't yes. try to love him. We don't try to love him. When we see that, when we see his love, we'll love him automatically. Amen. Yes. I yes. believe we will. Yes. I do. Amen. And you know what a what an opportunity the Lord has given us to to enter into a love relationship with a yeah. supernatural God. And you yeah, know, I was yeah. thinking as we were talking, another passage of scripture that mm -hmm. corresponds with what we're talking about tonight mm -hmm. is John mm -hmm. chapter 14, when he says in verse 17, the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because mm -hmm. it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him for he dwells with you and will be in you. Mm -hmm. And this was a pre-Pentecost scripture but when holy spirit came that's that's fulfilled now when we know him for he dwells with us and he dwells in us and right. so we can know the things of the spirit that's by a right. relationship with the holy spirit that's right that's right we can know it now it, it has to be now why, why would uh, well i guess i could say it. how's this going to do us any good if we're if we're off and away and living out of the place that needs all the care and information mm -hmm. you know why carry this all all to our grave so to speak and then uh, be resurrected someday amen when we there's thousands of people need to hear what the holy spirit is saying right now in this day yeah See, we do not get eternal life and i, I don't mean we don't get it but we don't have to wait till we get over there somewhere to get it. Because John it. 17, John 17 says plainly, he says to know him is eternal life. And yes. then, I could, then I could go to John 14, you just quoted there in John 14, 20. And I'm thinking, how long is this going to be? He said, in that day, you shall know, mm -hmm. not suspect. In that day, you shall know that the father's in me. I'm in the father and, and, and we're in you. Amen. That's, it. That's a pretty close connection right there. That's Amen. it. Amen. In that day, what day? I think it's this day. It's about time. Maybe it's been a long time, and and uh, for some of us to wake up out of our our slumber and our sleep. But yeah. you know, it's it's the spirit that 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 arouses us and causes us to to get up in this daytime and and live. Amen. Because there's so many needs out there, and we definitely want to be vessels and channels and avenues that and uh, God can use. To bring liberation and freedom to creation. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't know why we're here other than that. I mean, you know, God's blessed our socks off. Amen. But He's He's blessed everybody's socks off. They just don't know it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know. Amen. <laughs> now, 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 Dr. Jimmy, uh, there there is a people and a camp we came out of, and I'm not trying to be offensive to anybody that will uh, that is watching yeah. or will watch this video, but there yeah. was an old song that said give me that old time religion and, and said, if it was good for Paul and Silas, it's good enough for me. You know, when you sing a song like that, here's the responsibility you carry with that is yeah. it's, it's going to be a matter of who you're singing to and who interprets that in what manner, you know, for some people, uh, uh, that old time religion means stuck in the rut of religious tradition of religious yeah. bondage. Yeah. You know, yeah. there is religious bondage, just like there's, you know, satanic bondage. There is a religious bondage and God doesn't want us living in that. Uh, I really think this, that the as we gain revelation, new yeah. insights, that's those moments when we grow in the Lord, we become uh, we have an awareness of everything he's already said is ours or what he says about us. So we have to grow in this knowledge. We have to gain an understanding of spiritual things so that we flow into and move into what he has already said that we are. Absolutely, Dr. Bill. You know, Peter even told us that. Remember, he said, desire earnestly the yes. sincere milk of the word. Yes. You know, we all have to have milk. Amen. We all have to be. Amen. Uh, drive the flock. It says, you know, we can't.
put more on them they can bear, but we can certainly, you know, they can certainly, and all of us have at our ages, we've been weaned from the milk, you know, right, the milk is right. good. The milk is good. The milk is necessary. My goodness. Uh, if our right. babies didn't have milk, they wouldn't, they wouldn't grow properly or the, the bones and everything wouldn't uh, form properly in them. But he said, you know, uh, uh, sincerely desire the milk of the word that you may grow thereby. Well, my right. question is, how much can we grow? Can we grow into the fullness of God? It says we can, you know, and right. laying aside all evil speakings and all that stuff. It's childish stuff. Amen. But listen, we're, we've, we've been in the, uh, we've, we've been in pursuit, I guess, and, and maybe God's been in more uh, pursuit of us than we have him. I don't know, but you know, God, God's just pinned us down to some things that we can't do certain things anymore. Yeah. Need some milk. They're still going to need some milk. And uh, my brother's in Africa, bless their heart. I'll have uh, my brother there and my, my ministry son's there. I'll say, you know, if you hear about a place, you know, go kind of search it out. And they usually come back and tell me, Jimmy, they're just a little bit still on the milk. Yeah. But that's okay. You know, that's okay. Because Peter said desire. And then I read in, in Joel, in the book of Job, third chapter there, he said, you know, that even in Zion, there's going to be some milk. Right. And, you know, there's going to be some, there's going to be some people that can touch. And, and, and the Spirit of God made me to know a long time ago. He said, you know, he told me this. And I'll go back to Pine Chris. Nobody knows where that's at. <laughs> but he said, yeah. Your, your ministry is not just to get people saved and filled with the Holy Ghost. Now, the Spirit of God talked to me about that before I knew very much about it. Right. But he said, your ministry is to present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. Now, you might think that's blasphemy or what, but listen, you know, we, we're supposed to grow them up for the work of their ministry, right? Right. Apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher, for the perfecting for the work of the saints or for the work of their ministry that they yeah, can go out. Yeah, protecting the saints. But we yeah. can't just send people out on the milk. We have to, you know, at least uh, uh, encourage them and strengthen them in the deeper things of God that they right. can go out there and preach the, preach the shallow thing. That's okay. You have to reach, you know, come down to their level, preach that. Don't just make them think, you know, you're, you're smarter than they are, you know, but you can touch every realm. God has a way to touch every realm, amen, and bring every man, man up into the fullness of himself, amen? Yeah, yeah. So I believe that's possible. I believe that's possible. I really do. That's why another reason I think a Bible school is important, okay? I do, because you can spend more time and you can articulate the things better, you know, and, and yes. show them through the scriptures, through the scriptures. I, I, I don't know how people can really, now, listen, I don't know how to say it, but I don't know how it could live without a without a preceding word, you know. Yeah. And you'll not live right. by bread alone. We've had a previous word. It wasn't bad. It just wasn't complete. Now there's right. a proceeding word. We can't live by that bread, but by every word that proceeds. Yes. Yes, absolutely. The moving of people into greater things. Amen. Praise absolutely. God for that. Yes. Amen. You said that about the former days. Of course, I can. <laughs> you know, God, people don't know what what Sarah and I lived through. And we're, I tell everybody, and they, I said, if you want to, you can give us a big hand. But I said, we're survivors of, of religion, and a lot of people clap their hands. <laughs> but in, yeah. in, in Ecclesiastic, in Ecclesiastic, I'll read it from the King James the Message Bible. Is better, but the Message Bible or the Ecclesiastic and King James. 7th chapter, 10th verse, it says, Say not thou, what is the cause that the former days were better than these? Yeah. People are asking those questions. Well, well, Brother Bill, uh, 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 Pastor Jimmy, Apostle Jimmy, Dr. Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> one, of, one of you. <laughs> Boy, them good old days were so much better. I mean, the Spirit of God was just moving things and really happening and everything. But I, I want to tell you, I want to tell you, it was a drop in the bucket. It was a drop in the in the bucket to what God is going to do in this day. And just hang yes. on. If you haven't seen, if you haven't seen everything you want to see, if you won't just camp there if, in that camp, you know, and camp just drive your stakes down, 
Amen. But just pull them up a little bit. God will take you into something greater. And the Message Bible says wise folks don't ask these questions. <laughs> yeah. what, are, what, are the, what are the good old days? What are these better than these days? And uh, uh, for thou dost not inquire wisely concerning that. This is in the Bible. He said, listen, you're not very wise in what's going on here. Now, right. Them days are okay. Model T's weren't too bad, you know. There was nothing else around. But after a while, amen, they got something with you didn't have to put some ashes in the, uh, out of the stove into a, a thing to put your foot on to drive down the road in. You know, now we got heaters and windshield wipers and cruise control and everything, amen. Mm -hmm. so the good yeah. old days, I, I lived through some of them days. That was all we had. That was all we had. But you see, God is updating. Now, here's a scripture that kind of puzzles me, Bill, a little bit. I'll share this. Okay. The children of this world are wiser than the children of light. And I'm thinking, Think about it. I, what, what about that scripture? I, I mean, well, you know, Brother Jimmy, we just can't know this that right now. And the book of Revelation, especially, you know, that's for after a while when we all get over yonder and Mark of Beast has come and the, the Battle of Armageddon has taken place and the Great Tribulation and all this stuff, you know, and you know, and then we'll be back after a little while, after seven years, we're going to come back and inherit all of it. But, you know, the devil's got to have his field day and all that stuff, you know. Well, that's, that's nonsense. That's really nonsense. You know, that's the carnal, that's the carnal thing you're talking about. It, to the natural man, it's foolishness. To the natural man, that is so far out there, what you're saying, that that book, that book, you said it well, a lot of people are saying it, that book is not about the revelation. It's the revelation of Jesus Christ. The only book out of 65 of them that tells you what it's about right up front. It's the revelation of Jesus. That's it. And blessed is the man that reads this book. And when I seen that in there, I thought, that's for me. <laughs> that's a book for right. me. Blessed is the man. Well, they told me, no, you stay out of that book. That's, that's bad, you know. Amen. But we got to grow. We got to grow and we got to grow up. Amen. And we are growing up. Thank God for that. And uh, there's so many wonderful things uh, currently operating. A lot of activity going on inside of you. Amen. You might think everything's dead and lies dormant. But this is not a day where things lie dead and dormant. This is a day yes. where things, this is a day where things bloom and blossom and yes. fill all of the earth, you know. For the knowledge yes. of the glory, the Lord's going to fill all of the earth as the waters cover your, cover the sea. Amen. That's a big thing. All my people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. Amen. He said, if you, you know, there's an ultimate price for that. He said, you know, if, if you, you, if you don't receive it, he said, then you won't be a priest to me. Amen. Mm -hmm. So we need, you know, that's going on the land. There's a lot of that. A lot of it's just fleshly show. We're destroyed for the lack of knowledge. And they say, well, we don't need this really deep knowledge and stuff. Oh, yes, you do. Oh, yes. yes. You, do. yes you, do. you need it. You need it worse than anything. Amen. It's a better medicine than you can get out of the drugstore. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. Absolutely. But Amen. Then, well, there's so much. There's so much. Uh, I wanted to read, and I know time's probably slipping away, but uh, let, let me go from back over into Acts just for a minute, because I, I looked at this and I thought, man, this is, I've had some experience in this area, and I really like it. Last chapter of Acts, 28th chapter, I, I want to read that, what, what Paul was doing. I think it's 20, yeah, 28, if I can find Acts. I'll find it here in a minute. Yeah. Yeah, chapter 28 and verse uh, 23 is a good one. Um, yeah, I better start verse 23. And when they had appointed him a day, that was Paul, uh, yeah. there, came, there came many to him into his lodging, and to whom he expounded. He expounded. Amen. He was opening up things. Uh, you know, talking about present realities, he was expounding and testifying the kingdom of God, persuading, 
Mm -hmm. Man, I love this, persuading them concerning who? Not just concerning the kingdom, concerning Jesus. And I'm thinking, you know, if our if our message is not persuading people about the kingdom and about Jesus, maybe it's not the gospel. Right? Mm -hmm. I think that's what we, we do. And, and we're, we're doing that all the time. I've, I've stayed up, uh, and we, we've told you about this, Sarah and I, we've stayed up all night talking about the things of God. And, you know, people would turn us down and they'd say, well, you know, I, I, we just don't see that. And we'd, we'd go back again. We'd stay up. You know, we'd talk about scriptures. We'd go over this day and night. I don't, I'm not saying you have to do that. But this Paul, Paul did that. He spent some time. I like to spend some time with people. You can develop not just a, a I, I like to develop a relationship, not just, uh, you know, you preach for me and I'll preach for you, that sort of thing. No, I like to build relationships with people. Right. Amen. That, that, that they're covenants made by the Spirit of God that cannot be broken. No matter what comes, they'll stay with your side. You know, I, I think of Brother Dave with you all the time, you know, whatever you want, that, that's what he wants, you know. Amen. You need that kind of thing. Concerning Jesus, how do you do that? Both out of the law of Moses and out of the prophet, from morning till evening. And some believed, and some believed the things which were spoken, and some believed not. And we're going to yes. find that. We'll find that from time to time, you know. A lot of people, and the Bible talks about some of them got it, some of them didn't. And sometimes the Jews come in and made a big uproar about everything, tried to uh, uh, curve people away from what, what they was teaching. And that happens to us even today. But I, I think we're I, I think we're founded on some good principle, and I, I I'm not I'm not interested in leading anybody astray. I don't I don't that's think right. I ever have. I, 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 it's not in my heart to do that. If I do that, it's not it's just not me. But but we're wanting to right. bring people into the reality, into the reality of what Jesus Christ has already done from for us, even from the foundation of the world. That's right. We need to spend a little time in instructing them out of the law of Moses, because Moses, if you can't believe him, Jesus said, you won't believe me, because Moses is still in the Old Testament, although we're not under the Mosaic law. No, by no right. means. We're right. not there. We're not there under that. I mean, that's been uh, uh, deter um, determined. It's been annihilated. It's over with. It's 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 been a known in any way you want to say it. We're not under that law of that, that old covenant. Right. But we're in a brand new covenant, which has everything better in this covenant. The Hebrew writer tells us that. And the Jews, the, the, the first century Jews, were having a real problem making the transition from an old Mosaic covenant into a new covenant that Jesus made. Amen. And it's yep. all through the scriptures, if we can see it. I don't know how we miss it, really. But Jeremiah talked, said, talked about it, said, hey, I'm going to make a new covenant with you after those days. After what days? After them days of Moses. And he yep. made us a new covenant. It's a better covenant, better name, better blood, better everything. Amen. Yes, so better great everything. Day, great day to be alive, people out there. Amen. I love every one of you. <laughs> Amen. Amen. And that's the whole thing is bringing people into truth is so important because the reality is, is many people live their lives in chaos and mm. in discouragement, in defeat. And, uh, you know, my estimation of that as a minister of 44 years, I've come yeah. to this conclusion that it's because they really haven't known truth that set them free. Jesus mm. said in, in John 8, you'll know truth and truth will make you free. So if people are not being set free, even in their individual personal lives, then there is an element of truth they haven't yet come into. So when someone comes along and preaches truth that's liberating, it's almost like their appetite is wet for a moment, but then they grab hold of themselves and say, you know what, that's not the way I learned it. That's not what I've been taught. And they fall right back into the bondage of religion. And yeah. so that's why we've got to teach this stuff. And uh, yes, uh, some wonderful things are being spoken tonight. That's right. Anything else you'd like to say tonight, uh, Dr. Jimmy? The wondrous thing. He only does wondrous things. 
I think it was uh, Job that said, fear not for the Lord shall do great things for you. Amen. Amen. And that's, that's what God's going to do, great things for you because you've been chosen for greatness. You haven't been chosen to beat over the head. Amen. And come under uh, condemnation and death. You've been you've been destined to reign with him. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you for being on the show tonight. And thank you, everyone out there, for joining us and for being yes. a part of what's being spoken. You've had a good hour of teaching tonight that has given you some wonderful things. You can go back and watch this video. I'll be posting it in about an hour, and you can watch yeah. this video again and again and again and glean from all of these scriptures. And the good thing is, We'll have more scriptures down the road to share with you. So yes, thank will. you so much for joining us tonight. Uh, Dr. Jimmy, thank you for being on the show tonight so much, my brother. Oh, you're, you're welcome. It's a joy. It's a joy to just share, just share the things of God and see people's life revolutionized. It is. Amen. 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 And so just so uh, our audience knows tonight, we are embarking on a new venture with what we are calling World Bible School University. It is a worldwide accredited university uh, that will reach the nations. We want to teach the nations. And so we're taking advantage of every platform available. But in the process, we're trusting God to put the pieces together. So you pray for mm -hmm. us. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, we're Appreciate just believing God for great things because, as Dr. Jimmy said tonight, God has destined you for greatness. Amen. You are destined Amen. for greatness. Amen. So we want to just say that thank you, everyone, for joining Kingdom Dynamics. Join us again uh, next week. Uh, tomorrow uh, morning, I have a uh, program uh, at 10 o'clock Central Time. And then again at 1 p.m. Central Time, my school of ministry, I'm teaching on cooperating with the Holy Spirit. It, it, there's just a lot of great shows that we have all week long. And uh, if you want to get involved in the Saturday Spotlight, the 1412 Saturday Spotlight, yeah. we're a part of a panel discussion where we talk about a lot of deep things. And uh, you can be a part of that 7 p.m. Central Time and just a lot of wonderful things that you can take advantage of right here on the Internet. God yeah, bless you, there. everyone. Amen. And uh, was you going to say something? Be there. Be there. Amen. God bless you, everyone. Have a great evening and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye-bye, Bill.